Hello, I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of Preferred Pain Center here in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm at the University of Phoenix Stadium, which incidentally is not in Phoenix. You know, everybody's heard of the University of Phoenix. It's an online and some in-person educational company that spans the country. The stadium is actually in Glendale, Arizona, and where I'm standing right now is the Pat Tillman Freedom Plaza at the stadium. Pat Tillman was a uh, football player at the Arizona State University, and then he played for the Arizona Cardinals from 98 to 2001-2. Then he went into the military, served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and then unfortunately was a victim of combat, a true patriot, and he will never be forgotten here uh, or anywhere in the country, but especially here where he played both. Um, so at any rate, there's a beautiful statue to my right. There's a nice uh, uh, pool here, a wading pool um, in his honor. The stadium itself was built back in 2006. It was completed at a cost of $455 million. The team itself put up about a third of that money. I think that's fairly normal these days as far as to who pays for what. Um, the stadium has been host to multitude of events, um, including uh, a Super Bowl, many concerts like U2, the Cardinals obviously play here, there's a lot of trade shows. And one interesting thing is that the highest grossing event that has taken place here was not the Super Bowl. It was the World Wrestling, um, Wrestlemania, back in I think it was uh, um, 2008. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was 2010 or 11. So unbelievable that that grossed more <laughs> than the Super Bowl. <laughs> Um, the topic for today is cortisone injections. What I'd like to discuss is the pros and cons of receiving a cortisone injection. Cortisone is also called corticosteroid, and it can be extremely effective for many musculoskeletal conditions that cause pain either in the soft tissues or in joints, such as the knee or the hip joint or the spine. Soft tissue, we're talking about things like tennis elbow, which is lateral epicondylitis, talking about rotator cuff problems and shoulder problems like bursitis. Um, cortisone is very commonly utilized for all these conditions. The body makes cortisone by the adrenal glands and it's used in such, thing, such things as uh, during times of stress, the body releases cortisone from the adrenal glands and it helps with anti-inflammation and stress relief. So it makes them on a regular basis. When you give cortisone in an injection in a, low, a focused area, it can be extremely effective as a huge anti-inflammatory effect. And that effect can last for weeks or maybe months. And then it can be repeated. But we get asked all the time, our pain doctors do at Preferred Pain Center, is what are the risks of cortisone? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. What I'd like to start first talk about is the benefits, the pros of cortisone. First of all, injections are focal, meaning you're not taking a um, prednisone pill by mouth or a steroid by mouth. It doesn't go all over the body. So if you inject it into a joint such as the knee, the cortisone sits in that joint space and acts on the inflamed areas. So it can help tremendously with pain relief. It can be very effective. It might take a few days of onset and it might last, like I said, for months. So it's a focal injection. The second thing that is a benefit is it's low cost. You know, compared to a surgery, um, a steroid injection is cheap. The medication itself is cheap. The administration of the injection is relatively cheap. You know, less than, much less than 1% of the cost of, of a big a knee replacement surgery or a hip replacement surgery. So the benefit is that you can, in an inexpensive way, relieve pain and prolong the need for surgery by potentially years. So if you're in your 60s and you have osteoarthritis of your knee that is problematic and painful and you're expecting to need a knee replacement surgery, wouldn't it be cool if you could have a cortisone injection every four or six months and delay the need for surgery by say three, four, five years. You know, knee replacement surgery, those implants are not meant to last forever. After about 15 years, there's a pretty 
high incidence of needing a revision surgery, and a revision surgery is rarely give you the great results that a primary surgery does. So if you can delay that need, that can be excellent. The other uh, benefit is it can allow a person to get back to activities, running, playing tennis, skiing, whatever it is that the person was doing before, it can be extremely beneficial. We know that osteoarthritis and other types of arthritis have an inflammatory component to them causing pain. Otherwise, why is it that, that ibuprofen or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatories by mouth work? They help a lot, and that's how they do it, is they decrease inflammation, which is what a cortisone injection can do. Let's talk about some risks of cortisone injections. The risk profile of a cortisone injection is what's called very, very low. It's not negligible, but it's low, okay? One of the risks is of getting too many steroid injections. There was a study done quite a few years ago looking at steroid injections in the shoulder for inflammation and pain. If more than three injections were done of cortisone and then the patient had a rotator cuff repair surgery done after that, the results were not as good as if less than three injections were done. So cortisone can deleteriously affect the tendon substance and the soft tissue substance um, in those areas, in the interface of where the tendon meets the bone. Um, in the foot, for instance, if you have uh, plantar fasciitis, uh, one injection may be okay, two may be okay. More than that, you're talking about potential problems. Cortisone can decrease what's called the fat pad around your heel. It can cause problems uh, with walking. It can cause uh, issues with the strength of where the tendon meets the bone. So it's a matter of moderation. And another potential uh, problem is if you are a diabetic and you're getting an injection into your back with cortisone or the hip or whatnot, there can be a 24 to 48 hour slight increase in your blood sugar levels. It's not usually an alarming increase. It's not usually something that you need to, uh, uh, quote, freak out over, but it should be known that if you're taking insulin and you're insulin-dependent diabetic, that to watch out for that and to be aware of it. If you need to decrease your intake of sweets or sugars or monitor your blood sugar for those couple of days, that's something that should be taken into account. Another risk that is not seen very commonly with a steroid injection, it's really a low risk, is adrenal gland suppression. Now, this rarely happens if you're getting a one-time injection or an injection every few months. It's much more common if a patient is, say, a rheumatoid arthritis patient and they get prednisone or some sort of steroid by mouth on a regular basis. The adrenal gland might say, you know what, there's a lot of cortisone in the system here. I don't really need to make any more for, for now. And it just stops. And if the patient then cuts back on the amount of prednisone that they're taking, then the body's not making cortisone. It realizes that the body needs more cortisone, so it usually will pick up the production. But for those few days or maybe a couple weeks, you might have a problem with the amount of cortisone that's available. So that's something that needs to be known about. But for a cortisone injection here and then one, you know, a few months later, it's not a really humongous um, issue. Very, very low in the totem pole of risk factors. Well, how well do cortisone injections work? Now we, have no, we know some of the benefits. We know a few of the risks that are involved. You know, the risk of infection from a cortisone injection, yeah, really low. As long as alcohol or some sort of, you know, sterile uh, injection technique is used, uh, it's a very, very low risk. You don't need to take prophylactic antibiotics or things like that. Um, it happens, especially in someone who's immunocompromised. You know, like someone who has uh, um, HIV or something like that and is not able to fight off normal types of bacteria as well. It can happen, okay? How well do they work? Very well, actually. One of the concerns, and additionally, that I didn't mention is, is cortisone going to destroy my cartilage? Well, there's some animal studies looking at that, and they have shown that repetitive cortisone injections can have a deleterious effect on cartilage. We don't know about that as much in humans because you're not... They haven't done studies where they, you know, inject cortisone into a live patient and then take the cartilage out and then see what kind of effect the cortisone had. We do know this. If you're 65, 70, and you're expecting a knee replacement in the near future, you're trying to put it off with cortisone injections, what difference does it make? If you're 35 and you're getting a cortisone injection into your knee, 
for uh, post-traumatic arthritis or into your shoulder or something like that. It is something to think about so that you don't get them every two weeks or every month thinking that, oh, this is no problem. I feel great after these. It could become an issue. Okay. And once again, moderation is key. So the steroid injections that are done, there's multiple different brand names that can be injected, but they have basically are the same uh, type of thing. It's corticosteroid. They work extremely well. Epidural steroid injections in the back um, and uh, in the facet joints have about a 75 to 80% success rate for pain relief. Knee injection, hip injections, it's about that um, at least uh, beneficial effect, but it's not permanent. It may need to be repeated every few months. How much cortisone is too much? That's a whole separate video in and of itself, and there's a lot of debate about it. But generally, most pain doctors and orthopedic surgeons would agree that every few months is okay to give a normal amount of an injection into a joint. Once again, a lot of debate about that. Anyway, there you have it, an overview on cortisone injections for musculoskeletal conditions. I'm Dr. David Green at University of Phoenix Stadium with Preferred Pain Center. Your pain stops here.